Nakona was really enjoying it at the Velocitron Cup, riding in hotshot like there was no tomorrow. His sister Lanka sat on the sidelines, watching. She was not fond of races, for she was a calm cub in her family. Vector Prime came and reassured her. What's the matter, Lanka? I can't join in the race because I'm not one for turbulence. She moaned. I know how it feels, Lanka, but your brother has different tastes unlike you. The reason why he chose Hotshot to be his companion was because he did it out of love. And Override chose you out of love, too. Try to love her more and support her in the race, and no matter who wins, I know Override will be a winner in your eyes, Lanka. Lanka knew what she had to do. She raced up to the barrier and called and shouted for Override as she watched her on the giant screens. Go. Override. You can do it. She called. Down on Earth, in the Autobot base, Faraha was feeling a little bored without Nakona, Lanka, Ali and Haraka by her side. She was lying sprawled all over the floor with her tongue hanging out like a comical person, wondering in boredom about what she can do to get closer to Jetfire after his encounter with Earth Water. He never has time to play with me, moaned Faraha, he never had time to play with me in the water. Never had time to play with who? Faraha heard the sound of giant footsteps and looked up. Right in front of her was Jetfire. Jetfire. She cried, and raced up to his leg, hugging it. Okay. Okay, mind my soft spot, mate, said Jetfire. Now, since I went underwater to uncover the Omega Lock, I was wondering if I could hang out with you more often. You know, play a little game or two. Don't tell Optimus, though, it'll be our little secret. Secret. It's not just a secret, I want to keep it safe for all to hear about forever, cried Faraha. No, we have to keep it a secret. If Optimus finds out I haven't been attending to my duties, he'll kill me. Why don't you let Scattershot and Upendi look after the base? We'll be perfectly fine out there by ourselves. In fact, no one else would know we're around, I swear. So with Scattershot and Upendi in charge of the base, Faraha and Jetfire set off into the mountains to find somewhere to play. Faraha was thinking hard about what to do next. Then, it struck her. I know. Let's get dirty. Dirty like a dingo. There was a huge puddle of mud down below, and Jetfire landed and transformed just as Faraha ran for it and landed with a splash in the dirty, sticky mud. Faraha was laughing so much as she smeared mud all over herself, turning her soft, golden fur coat brown and dirty. She threw some mud at Jetfire, who laughed loudly and smeared the mud all over his metallic skin. Soon there was no sign of that luscious gold coat Faraha proudly wore, instead, it was just brown fur. This is what getting dirty feels like, puffed Faraha, exhausted from playing in the dirt. Yeah, I agree, said Jetfire. This is why Autobots never get brown coats of paint. The two of them laughed loudly. Meanwhile, on Jungle Planet, Overhaul, Snarl and Backstop were taking a little rest. Haraka was there with them in the jungle clearing. That scourge really does get on your nerves, does he? asked Haraka. For me, yes, said Snarl, but since he snatched up your sister, I think his behavior has just got worse. Worse to him, he wants to marry her, said Haraka. That's what I heard, said Backstop. I've heard about it millions of times in poor parts of planet Earth. Lots of girls are forced to marry men, and then they die having babies. It's just not fair on those cruel people to do things like that to the ones we love. And they never go to school. Child marriage is totally unacceptable. Huffed Haraka. Well, it's a law on Jungle Planet, said Snarl. Whoever goes to this place who isn't an Autobot first has to marry the planet's leader, and Ali is the chosen one. I can't let her marry Scourge. He's a beast. He's a monster. H.